So, you've gotten into whiskey, you've seen some reviews, you hear people talking about all kinds of complex flavors that they're tasting in the whiskey, and you wanna know how to do it. Well, if you wanna find out how to develop your palate, stick around. So if you're watching this video, no doubt you've seen some whiskey reviews, you've read them, you've seen some online, and you get this long list of tasting notes. And many people have been asking me, how do they develop their palate to be able to taste all of these detailed flavors? Well, I wanna give a shout out to Larry, gonna take a stab at the last name, Gone? 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 I don't know. Anyway, Larry had reached out to me in Bourbon Real Talk community, and he asked for this answer. How do you develop your palate so that you could taste all of those complex flavors? So as usual, we have to go through the disclaimer so nobody gets their panties in a wad. You do not need this skill to enjoy whiskey. So if you're the kind of person that you start hearing detailed tasting notes and it just offends you or it makes you angry in any way, just turn this video off and go watch another Bourbon Real Talk episode. Um, you don't need this skill to enjoy whiskey. This is just for people who have a desire to develop this particular skill. Now, before we get into the specifics of the techniques, let's talk about where this information is even coming from. So there are a ton of different compounds in whiskey. Some are odorless and flavorless to humans, but there are others that do have odors and flavors, and those compounds are collectively referred to as congeners. Now, before you dismiss all of this as kind of a hoax or just somebody being pretentious, I want you to know that you can take a whiskey and run it through a gas spectrometer, and you can see that it has some of the same flavor compounds as things like apples, pineapples, bananas, etc. So if the whiskey has those compounds in it, it's not impossible to imagine that some people would be able to taste it. Now, another thing you need to know is that this equipment is not as good as a human palate because right now, the laboratory equipment that we have to analyze the flavor compounds is only a fraction of sensitivity of the human palate. So humans are way better at detecting things than this equipment is. Congeners are kind of this catch-all term that basically means anything that affects flavor. And they include things like fusel oils, aldehydes, furfurols, esters, solids, tannins, and many uncharacterized compounds. Most of the fruity flavors that you find in whiskey come from esters and aldehydes. Uh, there's too many examples, but just to give you an idea how all of this stuff works together, if a distiller produces a whiskey that has butyric acid in it, which it can do by affecting uh, the, the fermentation temperature, the yeast strain that they use, and things like that, Whenever the distillate comes off of the still, it's gonna smell like vomit. But if you let that whiskey age and it esterifies, it will turn into isobutyl acetate, which is what makes pineapple taste like pineapple. So now that we know what we're trying to detect and where it all comes from, let's talk about how you can kind of hack your brain and tap into your natural brain's tendency so that you can develop your palate. The first thing that you need to know is that humans have three separate brains, okay? You've got your prefrontal cortex, and that's where the logic center of the brain is. You have your mammalian brain, which is what we have in common with like dogs and cats. And that's typically where you have your fight or flight, some of your stronger emotional impulses. And then you have your reptilian brain, which just basically keeps you alive. It's in charge of breathing, heartbeat, things like that. And these three brains work in tandem with one another. And we're gonna talk about how they interact with one another so that you can manipulate your mind into developing new neural pathways. So whenever you are tasting or smelling something and it's familiar to you, it just means that you have a neural pathway that's been created from the past, from some experience, and it's familiar enough to you that it draws you back to that time and place and you can identify it. So basically, humans have this interesting ability to take an experience and to store it for future use. So say for instance that you're a caveman and you went to a new place and you got attacked by some wild beast, your brain would start to remember and sequence the things that happen so that the next time you start to see something that's similar to that, you know what to do, you know to be concerned. And it's the same thing with smell. Um, unfortunately, the same thing is what causes anxiety disorders and PTSD uh, because whenever you get into a stressful situation, your brain stops sequencing time and you don't really need that function, right? And your brain just focuses on getting yourself through that dangerous environment. 
Um, and so now you have this dangerous event that's in your mind. It has no ending and it gets brought up when you don't want it. We do not want that as we're developing our palettes. We want the opposite of that where we create a positive memory and tie that flavor experience or that sensory experience to that positive memory. So this comes to our first brain hack tip and that is people are often not using the logic center of their brain when they're smelling and drinking. Often people are just kind of in their subconscious mind, if you will. This is a disadvantage when you're trying to develop your palate because your subconscious mind sees no reason to store this taste or smell and to create a new neural pathway because there's really no threat and your subconscious mind is really just looking for threats. So to develop your palate, you have to get focused and focus your attention in your conscious mind and you have to wrest control from your sub subconscious mind so that you can start to store that as a memory. Hey Bourbon Real Talk, Randy Sullivan here with some very exciting news. We have new merch just in for all of your whiskey aficionado needs. We have Glenn Travel Cases. Now these were custom designed uh, Lindsay had to work this out with the manufacturer to get them just the right size. There are two different sizes. You can buy them empty without the glasses in them. They're $28 a piece. Or you can buy them with Bourbon Real Talk Official full-size Glens. But there's more. We also have the Wee Glen size. And these are perfect for when you're going to a bottle share or you're traveling, you want to throw something in your suitcase. So that's very exciting. So with the Glens, they're going to be 48. Without the Glens, they're going to be 28 because I know a lot of you already have glasses. And do not worry, the standard Glen Karen size glasses fit in both the full size and the Wii. In addition to that, we have finally gotten in our Glen toppers. So if you've ever been to a bottle share and you are walking around and talking with people, especially if you've purchased one of our lanyards, you're gonna want one of these bad boys. It's got a little rubber gasket on it. If you are setting up for a tasting and people are going to be coming over later, this is very convenient to keep things out of the whiskey so that you can pre-pour, but it also keeps you from spilling in public. So go check that out as well. And for those of you who do not like to drink your whiskey neat, you like to drink out of a rocks glass, we now have Bourbon Real Talk Official etched rocks glasses for you, available on the website. So if you've been paying attention to Whiskey Tube for very long, you've probably come across Fred Minnick. Fred Minnick is a author. He's one of the better known whiskey educators in the United States. And if you followed him for very long, you know that he served some active duty service uh, in the military. And when he got back, he had PTSD. And he tells a story about going to get treatment for his PTSD. And one of the things that the counselor recommended that he do is to become very intentional about everything that he was eating and drinking. And it caused him to be able to use his logic center of his brain to wrest control of his subconscious mind that was giving him those negative feelings. But in the process, he actually started to develop his palate. And I want you to be able to do the same thing. So what I want you to do is go Google bourbon flavor will. Just Google it. Um, I'm not gonna include it in here because I don't know if it's trademarked or anything like that. But when you search those words, you're gonna find a flavor will, and that's gonna give you pretty much a good basis, a universe, if you will, of all the possible flavors that you could find in a whiskey. And then I want you to seek out opportunities to smell and taste the aromas that are on the flavor will. While you're tasting these things, I want you to concentrate on the sensory experience. I want you to eliminate distractions. I don't want the TV on. You shouldn't be having a conversation with somebody else. And I want you to concentrate, and this is gonna sound a little bit weird, but I want you to concentrate on stimulating both sides of your brain. So research has shown that it's easier to create neural pathways when you have bilateral stimulation of both sides of your brain. And you can do this as easily as just alternating nostrils as you're smelling something. Um, so sometimes you'll see when someone's doing a review, they'll hold their glass on one side and then you'll see them smell out of the other nostril. 
<clears throat> this is a very good technique to alternate. The other thing that you can do, and this is something that you learn in yoga, is focusing your attention on one part of your body. So while you're having this sensory experience, you can focus your attention on what you're tasting on the left and right sides of your mouth. And this will help you to develop a, a, a memory that you can draw on in the future. Another thing you can do is try to link the experience to a memory. Does this smell or sensory experience remind you of something? Um, there's a lot of times where I'm tasting something and it'll take me back to my childhood and I won't remember what it was that I was tasting, but I'll have a memory of what I was doing. And if I dig around in there enough, I'll be able to pull it out. And that's when some of my weirder tasting notes come out. Um, all of these techniques, if you want them to work, you're gonna have to practice as often as possible and you'll start to develop your palate slowly but surely and you'll notice that you're starting to be able to pick out some individual scents. So one of the questions that I get asked quite often is should I buy an aroma kit if I'm trying to develop my palate? It might be helpful because the scents are designed to smell like that scent in whiskey. So the best example that I can give is the example of bananas. So when you taste banana runts or Laffy Taffy, nowadays people refer to that as a candy banana flavor or a fake banana flavor. And what people don't know is that when those candies were created, the commercial banana that was being sold was called a Gross Michael. And now we, drink, we eat Cavendish cultivar bananas because the Gross Michael is almost extinct. It was attacked by some sort of a illness and they had to switch over to this other more commercially viable banana and they don't taste exactly the same. And it's the same thing with whiskey. If you try to find a normal commercially available banana flavor in your whiskey now, you're probably not gonna find it. But you can find a flavor that tastes like banana Laffy Taffy or like a banana runt. And when you get an aroma kit, especially the one that I designed, I specifically picked scents that were more like that flavor smells in the whiskey. The other reason why an aroma kit might be helpful is because you can practice easier since you're not actually consuming the product. So if you wanna go out and create a sensory experience by maybe tasting clove, right? You're only gonna to wanna to eat so much clove and you're gonna run out of it. But if you have a vial that has clove in it, you can smell it as often as possible. It's easy to alternate between the different nostrils and all the other things that I've recommended just become easier whenever you have the aroma kit. The other thing that the Aroma Kit does is it makes it easy for you to play a couple of different games. So one way that you can use the Aroma Kit is by smelling the vials and trying to call what they actually are. You create a win and a lose pile and you just keep going through your lose pile until you have properly identified all the separate vials. And that's gonna give you that repetitive experience that you need to build those new neural pathways. You can also use the vials while you're drinking whiskey, which is hard to do whenever you're creating sensory experiences with actual consumables, because those consumables are gonna impact your palate and the whiskey's gonna end up tasting different. Whereas with an aroma kit, you can just smell it, taste, smell, taste, smell, taste, and break down those individual components without affecting your palate. So in conclusion, if you wanna develop your palate, you have to practice sensory experiences, you wanna stimulate both sides of your brain. You want to be intentional when you're having these things. You don't need an aroma kit, but it might be helpful. And hopefully that's gonna get you where you wanna be in your whiskey journey. So remember though that taste is subjective and there is a genetic component to this. Um, it, it's totally normal for you to find different tasting notes than somebody else. Um, that could also be genetic. If you're trying to see what it tastes like to you, some other people may disagree and that's totally fine. This is your journey and your process. Um, and you know, just understand that some people are gonna pick up these skills faster than others. There's no wrong pace. Um, but the good news is, is that for anybody who wants to develop their palate, they can. So if this is your first time watching the show, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and let you know a little bit about our show philosophy. We here at Bourbon Real Talk are about bringing people together around bourbon. And that's something that's important to me because I lost my brother to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath, I realized that he definitely was feeling separated and alone. And in the years following, as I got more involved in the whiskey enthusiast community, I started to see how whiskey was bringing people together. 
And it made me think that if there was somebody out there that was feeling alone, if I could get them connected to whiskey, whiskey would do the rest of the job and get them connected to others so they didn't have to feel the way that my brother did when he made that decision. Through that process though, I, I started to see some negative sides to the enthusiast community, what I call troll behavior. And basically there were a lot of individuals who were you know, getting on these online forums and showing hate towards people that they don't even know online. Uh, but that made me realize that if they can hate a stranger online, there's nothing that keeps me from loving a stranger online. And that's why I end every podcast the same way. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. And I'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Wes is telling me about his new Louis Vuitton cologne. Oh gosh. I uh I didn't I didn't think that Wes is like the Louis Vuitton kind of guy, but I am. He is, because he likes things that smell nice. I'm fancy. Out there in Alvarado. Out there in Alvarado getting all fancy with the LV, baby. Yeah. I'll roll up to the honky-tonk smelling good. Mm-hmm. Got to get to that honky-tonk with the Louis Vuitton. Tong. All right. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face-to-face -face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary, <laughs> idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.